Hey guys, welcome back to Beach and Fishing. Paul here with you. This is my site and channel aimed at everything to do with fishing. Um, I enjoy it. I don't enjoy it. I love fishing. Went yesterday. Had a pretty good run yesterday, actually. There was a, a um, been a lot of rain here lately, and we we're in a bit of murky water, and we actually did quite well on local bait. We tried one of those times where none of the lures, none of the soft plastics we worked, and fresh local bait, which was yabbies that we use work to treat so every now and then things just don't work out the way that you think they would but we still caught plenty of fish anyway what i'm going to do today is step into some very dangerous territory because if it, if you listening to this and and your friends and my friends or anything or your friends or anything like my friends then you will understand that the old spin bait caster versus spinning wheel debate is going to go on forever and gets quite interesting. So all I'm going to do today is just talk you through both types of reel for those of you trying to work out which one you want to get. Uh, we're looking at the, I've actually got my big surf rod in here today because as I said, I went out fishing in a friend of mine's boat yesterday and all the rods got cleaned and they're still at his place. So I haven't got my little reels here. But I have got um, the reel here. So the spinning reel basically sits on top of the, on the bottom of the rod, sorry. And then the bait caster reel is the one that sits on top. So you cast it, the bait, the bait runner reel like that. A bait caster reel, not bait runner reel, bait caster reel like that. And then the, obviously the spinning reel works as such. Now what I have done, I have Got them nice and loose so I can take them off the rod so it's easier to explain to you. Don't worry about that rod, it's a big, massive, big, my big tailor rod, which I'll talk about in another post. I only just bought this reel um, last week actually, so haven't explored, they haven't even used it yet, but once I do, I'll be reporting back here. But spinning reels now, as I say, the bait caster versus spinning reel debate goes on quite heavily throughout time. Um, I've always been a spinning reel user. I struggle with the bait casters, I will admit, but I have used this one here. I've actually borrowed from a friend of mine. I don't own one because I've never actually purchased one. As I say, I've always been a spinning reel person, but I've been playing with that one. I've had a couple of birds nests on it, which I'll explain to you as we go on to the reel. But let's have a look at the difference between the spinning reel and the bait caster reel. Now the bait caster reel, before I talk about the spinning reel, the bait caster reels are designed for good casting. That said, I purchased this one because I want a long casting one on the in the surf. So when um, spinning reels cast, you push the bail forward and the line comes out through the bail and it, you can see it, it would actually, it turns as it, as it shoots out through the, through the eyelets of the reel. But a good spinning reel, as you can see it, it we call them egg beaters here too, because of the egg beating type um, scenario they very easy to use the as I say the the line goes on the outside of, inside of this bale so when it's been uh, pulled in that pulls in like that to cast you simply flick the bale forward throw the line the sinker or the lure takes the weight and pulls the line out from the start it spins out that way through the eyelets and out she goes once you're ready to, to fish bale spins over and you just reel it in like that how these are normally designed is this one, this one's a five to one to one ratio, I think, on it. Where does it say that? It doesn't say it there. Probably says it on the box because I've still even got the box. That's how new this one is. Uh, yeah, five to one to one ratio. You can see all the settings there. So five to one to one ratio, five um, bearings in this one, which actually isn't quite, isn't a lot. It's nice and light, 370 grams. So anyway, that's just, so five to one to one ratio means that every time you turn this, the handle one round, it's brought the line in 5.1 spins on the, the, the reel. So that just means it's bringing in a lot faster than what um, you're turning, which means you can bring in the fish a lot faster. This one's made of aluminium, as I say, so it's nice and lightweight. You can get them in carbon fiber even these days, but look for one that is nice and light, aluminium, um, Stainless steel, tends, they tend to be a bit heavy. I've got a couple of stainless steel ones, not in here, but well, I've got one in particular that's stainless steel that's heavy as. Um, but nice and light, stainless steel and, and hard plastic for all the settings. 
I mentioned before the ratio, so look for one that's got a good ratio, anywhere around five to six, even some are even seven to one ratio. The bait casters tend to be a higher ratio. Uh, ball bearings, meaning that there's ball bearings inside the turning point here and normally one in the handle. That just makes it nice and smooth. You can see that keeps turning. It won't put on a rod actually, but honestly, obviously, but it keeps turning, means it's nice and smooth. Um, what else can we talk about with these? Interchangeable handles, they turn from left I can pull that, unscrew that there, pull it all the way out, pull it around, turn it around the other way and use it the other way. Uh, this one's got a line holder on. This one's held by a rubber band at the moment. But it's got a little uh, line holder there, which trust me, you really like to have because that's where you hook your line through when it's not attached to anything. So it's flying off all over the shop. And an anti-reverse switch. So you can see I can, if I turn that off, I can turn this both ways, which some people like, especially if in the surf, you can just sort of, run that out and let it edge out gently. If the tide's going out, it can pull your line out a bit further. Otherwise, if it's sitting in a rod holder or something like that, you're not gonna want that to, to pull back. So I can't pull that, that back. I don't know, you can't see that very well in the video, but that's how that works. So that's the spinning reel. Now the advantage of the spinning reel, they're very easy to use. These days they're very low maintenance. I'm not gonna pull all this off. The, oh, the drag's at the front here. This one has about six or seven carbon washers in the drag, which makes it quite strong. If I pull that all the way off, everything's not gonna fly out. It's all housed in one piece, which makes it good for rust proofing and good for maintenance. So they're low maintenance, they're easy to use. As I said, you just flick the thing, out it comes, flick the bale back in and off it goes. No mate lat, no backlash, which we'll talk about in a second. And they are Look, easy to use. As I say, I, I've always used egg beaters rather than bait casters. Uh, my kids have used them. Most of my friends use them. They're just easy. They're easy to use. The only problem with them is, is that not as accurate to cast as the bait casters. And they, um, they don't handle, although there are uh, variations of this and you can get some very nice, very expensive, um, spinning reels that will handle this. But if you have a look at the big game fishing, most of them have the upside down model, the bait caster or the boat version of bait casters. They don't handle big game fish as well as the as the oversized bait casters or the oval bait casters do. So if you go, if you're using especially heavy uh, tackle, especially heavy lures, or need to cast long and accurate, probably the downfall of these, but for 99.9% .9 of fishing that you do, these will certainly meet, meet your needs. So that's the spinning reel. Now we go to the bait caster reel. Now, as I've mentioned, I've got the bait caster reel here. Um, it sits on top, so you cast out like that. I'm gonna take this off the rod now, so I don't keep hitting the ceiling with the rod. This is a little tiny um, estuary rod. So you can see the bait caster reel there, as I say, sits on top. How these cast is there's a little switch at the back that presses down, spin it out, and the line just feeds straight out. Now, because the line feeds out more direct, it comes straight off the spool, doesn't have the turning sensation that the egg beaters do, it tends to be a lot more accurate and will cast a lot further. So bait casters are used by people who want, a bit, want accuracy in casting a lot further. Um, there's a few different settings on here. Uh, I've got um, the spool speed on the side here. I've got my drag on this little star drag here. So these are quite, dragging on the um, bait cast is a lot more accurate than on the spinning reels I tend to find in the ones that use this, like just a little turn, we'll just give it just that little bit more or less. Uh, this one has a, um, a, a, um, I can't think of the word I want to use, but it, it's to control the spool once the, the um, let me have a look, let me read my post, spool, spool tension adjustment. So what that does is as the gear hits the water, it stops the spin and that's done by this. Uh, this here controls the, the centrifugal or the magnetic, this is a magnetic, um, my God, I'm losing all my words here, brakes. How easy it was <laughs> you can tell I use bait casters much, can't you? Basically, how these work. The problem with, with bait casters is they have what's called backlash. Now, what happens is if you've got particularly heavy sinker on, you can see as I mentioned before, I flick you flick that button down, and as you cast, 
sometimes the heavy weight can make this the the line move faster than what the spool can really handle and it birds nests which means all the the um line comes out here and just tangles the biggest bane of most people who use bait casts especially when they're first using them i am trying to get used to them because i think i'd like to get to use them more um, as i say i've been borrowing this one off a friend of mine um, but what the brakes do is the brakes will actually allow you to adjust how fast the, the spool spins, which means if the spool is starting to go too fast because of the weight, the brakes will slow it down and stops the, the, the backlash or the bird's nest. So there's normally two types of brakes on a um, bait caster. This one is magnetic, as I say, so there's little magnets in the side here that, that flick in and slow it down if you if you set it up some of the more expensive ones have what we call centrifugal centrifugal brake fugal fusal centrifuge centrifugal brakes inside and what they do is as the momentum goes they use gravity to pop out if it go at a certain once it reaches a certain speed it'll push the magnets out and slow the spool down again stopping birds nests so I've got my magnetic brake on here I can set that as as minimum and maximum so it just means minimum brakes maximum brakes and that does that this one here will set the the limit of speed once it hits the water so again once it's the water because if this is spinning its head off and it hits the water as soon as the reel notices that it slows down if it doesn't again it keeps spinning and line goes everywhere and you've got your your um you can see that the star get my hands out the way you can see the star um drag on the side there so you just set the drag on the side there as you as you're reeling so two-handed reeling uh, the advantages of this one obviously is accuracy and and casting these can handle a lot heavier weight than what the um the spinning rules can the the spinning rules that's come goes by the rating this is a six thousand as i say it's built i got this for the surf 60 or six thousand six hundred the guy in the shop was calling it six hundred um, basically means the line specs that can take any 600 is anywhere around six six pound this will take six to ten pound of um, mono I've got 15 pound braid on this but it will take up to around 30 pound being a 60 a 60 um, and it just it's all it's there's not a real exact science to it and different rods have different specifications but Normally the, the first numbers where I tend to take the pounds. So 60 or 6,000, starting at six pound mono. Um, I normally double that for my braid. I know even in my posts, I've got different measurements for that, but that's how I tend to work. If you overload the line, it will, it, these will bird nest if you overload the line. How these work though, is they don't, they don't tend to work with the 6,000, um, that sort of thing. They'll have a spec, I, this one, um does have the spec on i need to put my glasses on sorry i can't read the, the spec numbers there um so this line capacity is at 10 pound you can put 160 yards on it at 12 pound 130 yards on it and 14 pound 110 yards so this one actually can't hold as much line as this one but it's a smaller rated reel if i had an apples to apples if i had a smaller like a 2000 or 3000 reel which is what this tends to look to be around um i'd be a, wouldn't be able to hold as much line on the smaller one as you can on this one but what that means if i've got um if this one's rated for 10 pound i can put 160 yards of line on this and that's how it works and it will it will run from there as i say though i can handle if this was the same size on a on a spinning reel it would be a lot smaller capacity that could handle so they can handle a bit more line they can handle a bit more larger line for their size and they can definitely handle larger sinkers and lure soft weights for their for their size compared to spinning reel so people get these if they want accuracy in casting if they want to use bigger uh, if they're ch chasing larger species the reason i want to try this is because we ch chase a species called mangrove called mangrove jack and the smaller spinner reels we have can't handle them. They, um, because we can't handle the drag as well, mangrove drag come out of the mangroves, grab, hit hard and sneak back in. You need something that can stop that fish pretty quickly or else it's going to take you back in and, and tangle you. And we've caught them on the spinning reels, but we've been told that they're better on the bait casters. 
easier to work the bait houses. That's why I'm, I'm practicing them. Um, so yeah, bigger species, straighter casting, and longer casting. If you want longer, accurate casting, these will work. Some people actually are starting to use these in the surf now for that reason, or not starting to, do use these in the surf for that reason, because they can cast out further if they need to get over the top of waves and stuff like that. Um, the problem is, is that they get that, that backlash, that, that bird's nest if, um, if you don't have all your settings right, and I've had a couple of bird's nests, they take a bit more playing with to get used to then what a spinning reel? Spinning reel, you buy them for kids. You open up, they cast out, they close it off and they fish away. These ones take a bit more getting used to, um, but they can handle, as I say, longer casting, heavier lures. So if you're chasing bigger species, and that's why most boat reels you see these days are the overhead type, for, especially for the big game. If you go out in a fishing charter, most of them have egg beaters because it's, again, it's just easier for their customers to use. But if you're chasing a really big game, you'll have a bait caster on there, I would imagine. Um, they're lighter generally than the than the um, spinning reels. This one's made of carbon of a carbon material, as most of them are these days. Uh, the only problem with them is you do need heavier sinkers. If you're trying to use light sinkers on these, they, they don't lighter lures and sinkers. They don't tend to work as well as the heavier stuff. that made sense that was that's it guys that's my bait caster versus spinning reel argument it's not really an argument it's just hopefully just giving you an outline of the two i have always used the spinning reels i'm trying to use bait caster reels and i make you a promise that for those bait caster enthusiasts out there i will report back over time with how i'm going with them but Choose what you want to choose, and hopefully that's given you a bit of a run through of what they both do, how they both work, and where you can use them. Okay, thanks guys. Hope that was helpful. Happy fishing. If you're watching this with the YouTube, please like and subscribe to my channel below. That way I can keep you abreast of everything to do, even if you just want to see how I meddle around with the bait caster for a while. Um, if you're watching this within the post and you prefer one or the other, I'd love to hear your reasons why you prefer spinning reels over bait caster reels, if you use spinning reels for deep sea action, what types you use, if you use bait caster reels with light lures, I'd love to know how you do that. Um, or if you just want to tell me why one is better than the other, I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. Okay guys, chat to you soon. Bye.